Today, I'm going to show you the differences between the Clone Stamp tool, the Healing Brush tool, and Generative Fill AI in Photoshop. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and today we're bringing back some old school tools like the Clone Stamp tool and the Healing Brush tool and comparing those with our brand new tools, Generative Fill using AI. Now, the reason why we're making this tutorial is that a lot of our new posts on social media are being tagged with artificial intelligence, even if we're just doing things like removing certain objects from our photos. Things that could be done simply using traditional tools like the Clone Stamp tool and the Healing Brush tool. Because we use Generative Fill, there are social media applications that are tagging our images in AI, and a lot of photographers and artists and creatives don't really like this. For instance, if the majority of their image was created you know, with as a photograph, and then just a tiny little thing was removed, all of a sudden it gets tagged as AI. So if you want to avoid having that tag, you can use some of these more traditional tools. So we're going to go ahead and show you how all this works, talk about the pros and the cons of all these different tools together in Photoshop. Let's jump in. So here we are in Photoshop. Now we have a nice image here. You can see really cool composition. Um, I just want to remove this red umbrella right here. So we're going to do that using a few different tools. So we're going to start off with our clone stamp tool. Let's go ahead and we are on our background layer. Let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking right up here to the new layer icon. You can see we're on layer one now. And we're going to hit S for the clone stamp tool or go right over here to clone stamp. Okay. Now with the clone stamp tool, you're going to want to make sure here where it says sample, go to current and below. It's going to sample anything that's on this layer, but also whatever's below it. You can see it's going to be the background layer too. Okay, now to use this tool, you're going to hold Alt or Option and click. That's going to create your sample point. And then you can simply paint over and it's going to copy wherever you sample. It's going to copy it directly to wherever you paste. Okay, so this is literally just making a direct copy. There we go. I'm going to hold Alt or Option one more time and we're going to start to remove this umbrella. So this is a very manual tool. Now, historically, this was basically like how you remove things in Photoshop for years and years and years. You can see it just duplicates literally exactly where you copy. So you kind of have to sample a few different times. There we go to keep from having like uh, repeating patterns and things like that, right? So it's a very, very manual process. It, we really didn't have any other options for many years. So this is just like we, we got good at it. We got good at clone stamping, right? But you can see how long and tedious this process is for clone stamping something out. There we go. And then for here, I, I don't even know what to do. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and sample there, get a little preview. And yeah, that, that looks okay there. Kind of like try to put those together. So you kind of have to like find the patterns in your images together, but you can get a beautiful professional looking result. You know, like you, you can't tell that there was an umbrella there or anything like that. So a clone stamp tool is really, really great if you want to do an exact copy of one thing into another area's place. And you can do very accurate work with a clone stamp tool. But as you can see, like if I tried to remove these people, for instance, it's going to get very difficult. Like I'll have to hold alt or option to sample this pillar here and then kind of come down here and, you know, paint in this, this pillar. And then there's some floor over there. So I got to get some, some floor. Okay. There we go. And then there's like a chair here. So I got to like basically kind of uh, repaint in this chair, which you can do, you know, you, I'm just holding alt or option and, you know, kind of painting this in over and over and over again. Um, you can totally do it. Like it's, you know, we didn't have the option for, for many years. Uh, this is kind of like all, all we could do. But as you can see, it's a very manual process. But again, if you want to avoid using AI tools, this is one great way to do it. And then you can see like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm able to remove that dude. Uh, you know, we're just literally copying pixels from one place over to another, but we can get the job done. All right, let me just finish up with our dude here. And uh, there we go. Okay, so that's going to be our clone stamp tool. And you can see it can be a very uh, effective tool. Obviously, I did that kind of quick, but it does do the job. Okay, let's just go ahead and call this clone stamp. Perfect. Now, the next tool we're going to show you, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer again. And we're going to go to our spot healing brush tool. So the spot healing brush tool is a little bit more advanced than the clone stamp tool. What this tool does, you don't have to sample a point or anything like that. Literally, you just paint over the object that you want to remove. Okay. 
And then what Photoshop does, there we go, let's un just let that go. Photoshop will automatically look around your document and try to find similar areas and fill those areas in automatically. Okay, so literally I'm just kind of drag painting over the things that I want to remove and Photoshop does the majority of the work for us. So this is, let's just call this spot healing. There we go, I'm gonna double click here on this layer, spot healing. So this was a very advanced tool when it came out. This is not using artificial intelligence at all. Now, it does have its like like uh, limitations though, because it's just looking for different parts of our image and trying to fill those in, right? It's not gonna be generating anything new if I let go there, you're going to see it basically just try to like get rid of this, but it just kind of copied, you know, it copied, there we go, from like over there and tried to put it in here, right? So it's like definitely has its limitations, especially for more complex things where I'm like trying to re remove all that. And it it's doing okay, but it's trying to like figure out like, okay, what exactly do you want to do here? I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's like just trying to put more umbrella. It doesn't know to invent you know, a new seat right there and, and then put that seat in there, right? So that's one limitation of the spot healing brush tool. Also, for instance, if I wanted to remove a large area like this building here, I want to try to remove that. So we're just going to go ahead and paint this in there. All right, let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, you can do, see it did a decent job, but here we have repeating patterns, right? Like this, there we go, and that, and that. Those are all just the exact same thing. Now, of course, you can just go ahead and paint those out a second time and get rid of repeating patterns, but you get an idea of how this tool actually works now. It just samples different parts of your image and then puts those in there and kind of mixes them around. Let's see what happens when we try to remove this guy here using the spot healing brush tool. What's it gonna do? Okay, it created something that's kind of plausible, but doesn't really make sense. Like visually, it's like, okay, the table extends over there, but then it's like, what? what is that? So that's kind of the spot healing brush tool. It is fantastic, especially if you need to remove simple things like that, you know, umbrella that we removed right there. Like it did a very good job with that, an umbrella against some sand. And again, the reason why we're talking about this is because the clone stamp tool and the spot healing brush tool are not using AI at all. So your flag, your photos won't be flagged with AI. And you can do a lot of simple jobs with these tools. They're still very reliable and they still do a very good job. Now let's go ahead. We're just going to create a new layer. And we're going to go and do basically the same thing using AI. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't want to spend a lot of time learning how to use all these advanced tools like the clone stamp tool and the spot healing, generative fill using AI is by far the easiest thing. And if you don't mind that your photos might be tagged with AI, um, I, I just recommend using AI because it's so, so easy. Okay, we're going to be using it with our brand new tool here. New to Photoshop, we now have the Selection Brush Tool. It's located with the Lasso Tools. So the Selection Brush Tool, in my opinion, it's right over here, uh, works really, really well with Generative Fill. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and just zoom in. Okay, we're gonna paint over top of the object we want to remove. There we go, we'll just paint over the entire thing. Okay, now this is selected now with our new Selection Brush Tool, Any anything that's pink here. And then you just click on Generative Fill and then click on Generate. And this sends this information to the cloud. It processes it using AI and it's gonna just send it back and fill in with whatever it thinks should go there. Okay, so all this stuff is generated brand new from the web. It's not copying from any other parts of the photo. This is brand new generation. And you can see it does an amazing job. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, we'll put it to the test. We'll make it even a little bit more difficult. All right, we'll remove these umbrellas down here. Fantastic. And the shadows, there we go. And I want to remove this umbrella here and then we'll see what it does, you know, cause this was d fairly difficult for both tools. Let's click on generative fill and then click on generate and see what we get out of this. Again, this is using AI and the computer's just kind of figuring out, okay, that's what you want to get rid of. Now we have a few different options here, but yeah, all in all that looked good. It completely invented that part of the seat for us, you know, that, that wasn't there to start with but it did a pretty good job. It's plausible, it's believable. Now let's go ahead and see what happens when we remove this entire uh, building here. There we go. So just painting over this, again, using the new selection brush tool, click on generative fill and click on generate. You can see there's basically, there's not much skill involved here. I'm just painting over the areas that I want to remove and click on generate and this tool does the rest. And then of course here 
in our properties window, we have a few variations and it's not going to be repeating any areas from our photograph because these are generated brand new from the web. Okay, let's do the same thing here. I'll just make our brush a little bit smaller and let's try removing this guy as well and see what it does. All right, let's click on generative fill and then click on generate. There we go. And as we can see, just takes a few seconds. It sends all this information to the cloud and then sends it back. And by far, this did a great job. Hey, look, it even made a, a new friend for her. Um, but by far, this did the best job for a complicated situation like that. Now I have the confidence I could say, yeah, go ahead and remove this person too and remove all those drinks. Uh, see about removing her foot there and, you know, all that too. So let's click on generative fill and then click on generate. Whereas this really didn't work that well with our spot healing brush tool and with the clone stamp tool you can kind of get it done but it, it kind of takes forever there we go let's go ahead and just you know keep refining that and click on generative fill and then click on generate to do that as well but as you can see this is uh it's very easy <laughs> and, and that's the whole point is the ai is kind of taking over uh all these difficult tasks for us and you can see all these different layers uh we made with AI. So let's go ahead and group those. So here's the before and after all those things that we've done with AI. This was our uh, spot healing brush tool. Okay, you can still see a decent job, um, especially considering that it's very easy to do. Okay, and then here's our clone stamp tool where we were able to get rid of some of these things as well. So they basically all serve the same purpose. So my suggestions are, if you're trying to avoid using AI, Clone Stamp and Spot Healing are a fantastic way to start. Spot Healing Brush will do the majority of the work for you. If you need to come in and clean it up afterwards, that's where the Clone Stamp tool comes into hand. Like, that's where it's actually useful. Um, if you're not worried about an AI label and you're okay using AI, then Generative Fill, especially with the new Selection Brush tool, is just by far the easiest way to get the job done, especially if you just want to remove stuff from your photos. So uh, that's basically an overview of all the tools we've used traditionally in their comparison to these new generation AI tools. Alrighty, let me know what you think. Are you still using any of the new tradition, any of the older tools like Spot Healing or Clone Stamp? I'd love to know, like, what's the mix of people who are still using those traditional tools versus strictly AI? Let me know in a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up. Let me know what you'd like to learn in the comments. And if you want to get more free tutorials, click on subscribe. Thanks again, and I will learn you later. Bye, everyone.